At home with a lifetime of stories and songs People we've met and the places we've gone Along the way found where and how we belong At home with a lifetime of stories and songs Welcome to more songs and stories from home Podcasts that give voice to songs with stories and stories with songs written and being written over the course of a lifetime, often illuminating the journey we all make, together and alone, finding our way home. 1968, Part 1 Albert Einstein spoke eloquently about imagination, calling it the language of the soul, proclaiming it more important than knowledge, saying, if we pay attention to it, we will discover all we need to be fulfilled. When the morning ride made our recording in the big room in December of 1967, much of life remained unimaginable to me. Things like a career in music or a life outside the one I'd lived in Spokane or was currently living as a college student. And then in June of 1968, I was both touched and touched by what had previously been unimaginable. The morning ride was chosen to represent the University of Washington in a nationwide talent contest called Your All-American College Show. We flew down to L.A. the afternoon of June 6th. Robert Kennedy had died earlier that day. We were staying near the Ambassador Hotel where he'd been shot. The four of us went there easily accessing the kitchen area where he'd fallen. We knelt down and touched the floor near where he lay. The floor was a kind of cold I had never felt before. Though to this day I can close my eyes and imagine I'm feeling it still. Two days later, the four of us were on stage bathed in the warm glow of TV lights and applause. Someone handed me a large trophy that proclaimed us first place winners. What had previously been unimaginable, was suddenly at that moment in the palm of my hands. Love is but the song we sing Fade away we die You can make the mountains ring Or make the angels cry Though the dove is on the wing You need not know why Hey people now, smile on your brothers Let me see it together so that's the that's the first verse and the refrain of a song called "Let's Get Together," of a song popularized by the Young Bloods and uh, made sort of an anthem of the time. And that recording you heard was one we made, "The Morning Ride," the group I sang with in college. We made in the end of 1967, just before. The dawn of 1968. We watch boys die in Vietnam in living rooms at night. We lost the Tet Offensive when we heard it from Cronkite. McCarthy in New Hampshire led a children's peace crusade. We believe times were changing. Back in 1968. Well, times were changing in 1968. 
for us uh, as a country, for for me as an individual. In the in the winter of 1968, I I was still on the path, living the life that that uh, that I'd known. Uh, grew up in a town of Spokane, not so big, not so. I was going to be come when I went to the University of Washington. I was studying zoology. I was going to be a doctor, like my dad. You know, kind of the kid dreams, I suppose. And uh, played some football there, and uh, found a found a found a good kind of a, a a good life that seemed to fit into the life that had gone that I'd been living up till then, and and uh, kept going in the in the winter of 1968, uh, taking those science classes, and then I took the MCAT test, the medical. Uh, application test and and uh, um, got some uh, uh, applications to diff by uh, dozen medical schools around the country, learning the names and places of these different things and and uh, all, all the time wondering. I was, there's a lot of competition out there and. I didn't know it at the time, but I, I this dyslexia had kind of made studying hard, harder than. But again, it, I wasn't sure and didn't know how to dream anything else. And the guy, when we'd recorded that, made that recording at the big room. We, the idea certainly wasn't to, as any anything more than four guys having having fun and enjoying it, singing with them. wasn't any career plans. That's for sure. And uh, and then some talent scouts came. And uh, they were looking for talent on college campuses, and uh, they came to the University of Washington. And I told the guys about it, and we went across the freeway and on 45th, and we uh, we auditioned in this hotel room. And uh, I'll be darned. A few weeks later, we heard the news that we'd we've been uh, we've been accepted, that we were going to be part of a national TV talent show uh, then and uh, we were going to like I say be completing competing with all these other all these other talented acts from from uh, different colleges and that's pretty neat you know again no no idea that we that this was anything more than a than something to do in in college and and uh, and then dr. King was killed on April 4th. And, and life began to look, look a little different from the summer of love a few months earlier. And then uh, getting ready for finals, uh, you know, I, I was studying for an econ test, last test, last finals of the spring quarter. And uh, one of the guys, Mike Dwyer, came in and Told me Bobby Kennedy had been shot. Suddenly, 1968 felt a little sh more shaky. And uh, but the the day that Bobby Kennedy died, the morning ride flew down to Los Angeles. We stayed in a hotel that was a block and a half away from the Ambassador Hotel where Robert Kennedy had been shot. Few nights earlier, and he had actually died the morning of the day we arrived. And so when when we uh, when we got there, we made a we made a point of going to the Ambassador Hotel, and we went into the kitchen area, and uh, and it, it was an old hotel, and it, and it had the wooden uh, paneling. In the along the walls, and and uh, some of the panels had been removed, where some of the bullets had ended up, and they were taken out. Uh, those panels had been taken out, and and there's this it's a it's a quiet place, empty place, and a very cold floor. Where we'd seen pictures of Bobby Kennedy lying there, and when, by the time we'd arrived, he had he he had died, and. Uh, and as uh, and he and somebody that, that that had grown up 
understanding the beauty of politics, or I guess that Jack Kennedy, his brother had taught us or had explained to us who were growing up that politics is a noble profession. And my dad had loved politics and was active. And thus we talked a lot about it. And he was involved in Minnesota politics and and uh, and, and had great respect for Hubert Humphrey. And, and, uh, and so I'd, it was something to realize after after King had been, Dr. King had been shot, and then here was Robert Kennedy, the guy that I, the, the, this guy, the first guy that I was going to vote for, had had died, and uh, so it was it was just something to stand quietly in that space for just a few minutes and get some sense of what was gone, and uh, we uh, had a had a practice uh, uh, rehearsal the next day, and uh, the day after that we we uh, filmed our show. There were four acts in our particular sh each half hour show, and we we were thinking this is kind of fun. And we weren't that serious about it, and then uh, at the at the end, Dennis James said, "And the winner is." The morning ride, and suddenly we were standing on the stage with a big trophy and a check for a thousand bucks. And I thought, well, this is this is kind of amazing. <laughs> this this is kind of could. Well, I just don't know, but it was a pretty special moment. Thank you for watching or listening to more songs and stories from home. Come back next time for part two of 1968. Knowing you're welcome here at home with a lifetime of stories and songs.